Hey guys, it's Meredith, back with another episode of Vibe with Velo. Today we're going to continue learning about different functions that are available from the Wix Data API. Previously we talked about Wix Data queries, and today we're going to focus on Wix Data aggregates. Aggregates can be useful when you have data that makes more sense to present as a group instead of individually. This could be things like sales data, donation data, population data, or any other sort of data that makes sense more as a group. We're going to be using a donations example today to look at how we can utilize the Wix aggregates API to group data to get sums, averages, mins, and maxes. As always, if you want to see everything that's available with the Wix data aggregates API, check out the API reference. Let's dive into our example site. Here I have a donation site already set up. On this donation site, we're able to donate to specific designation areas, such as education, events, scholarships, or just the general fund. What we're going to do is we're going to use the Wix data aggregate to calculate the total that has been donated so far to our site. I have created a database where we're going to collect all of our donations. So in here, we're able to see the name of the person who donated, the amount, their email address, and then what designation they selected when they did their donation. So we just have a little bit of sample data in here to work with. When we open up our code editor, I have some skeleton functions already built out for us, such as updating our donation text total, which is this text field right here. So let's go ahead and start building our aggregate. The first thing that we need to do is to remember to import the Wix data API. I already have it imported here at the top of my code. So when we want to get the Wix data aggregate, we start out very similar to creating a query. So let's go ahead and call this our um, donations sum. And that's going to be a Wix data dot aggregate this time instead of query. Similar to queries, aggregates also take in the collection ID. So in this case, we're going to be working with our donations table. Now, aggregates have a couple different functions from queries. So here are some examples of things that you can aggregate on, such as the average of a field. You can also group by fields and then run an average on the individual groups. We can find the maximum value, minimum value, or the sum, which is the one we're concerned about here when we just want to get all of the data and sum it all up to see how much has been donated. So we'll go ahead and sum. And the field that we're most interested in is the amount field. And then to execute this, we're going to go ahead and call dot run. Now, just like Wix data queries, Wix data aggregates are also asynchronous. So we either need to use the dot then, then notation or the async await. I am partial to async await. So let's go ahead and add the await keyword in front of our aggregate. But as a reminder, if we're awaiting something, we need to make sure that our function is asynchronous by adding the async keyword in front, of, in front of the function declaration. Once our aggregate returns, we can go ahead and grab out the items similar to how we do in a query. So let's go ahead and grab the amount sum, which is going to be our donations sum dot items and we know since we're summing everything we're not doing a group it's going to be the first item that returns so we can use the zero index and then when we group everything together or create a sum of an aggregate it does rename that field for us and generally speaking the field name the field's new name is the field that you ran the aggregate on tacked on with the function that you ran on top of it. So in this case, we did it on the amount field and we did a summation. So it's going to be amount sum. If you do want to designate the field name, you can as a second parameter within the sum function. So I could just call this like total or sum or any other name that you want to use it. So that way you always know what it's going to be returned. Otherwise, um, you can also inspect this by looking at what is returned from the aggregate result and take a look at what that item looks like to pull out the name as well. But generally speaking, it is going to be the field name 
in the aggregation that you did on it. I have a small typo because this is actually items. And now once we have that data, we're going to go ahead and update this field for this text field. So we'll go ahead and call $w.donation sum text dot text and we'll set this equal to the dollar amount of amount sum has been donated and we'll go ahead and preview to take a look at how this works because these will work in preview I forgot a space, but here you can see that XX has been updated to 245, which is the sum of that amount column in my database. Now, if I wanted to also look at how many people have donated, let me add a space here before I forget so it looks visually better. We could also include another aggregate in here as well, because with aggregates, you can combine them. So we could call dot count. And that'll get us the count of all of the rows that we are aggregating in our database. Then to access this, we can go ahead and grab something similar to this. So let's go ahead and call this total donators. Yes, is it donators? <laughs> and this will be the count. So we can say the total sum has been donated by Um, what is it? Our total donators plus, I don't know. So we'll go ahead and update the text and go ahead and preview this. And here we're able to see that $245 has been donated by 10 people, which is the number of rows in our database. So working with aggregates is really easy and it's really nice that you're able to combine different aggregates together as well. So let's look at another way that we can work with aggregates. A little further below, I have a table already set up for us here where we can aggregate based off the special, special designation such as education events, general, etc. So this way we can see how much money has been donated to each of these special designations. So if I go to my skeleton text for my designation table, I'm going to do something very similar where I'm going to go ahead and let the design, designation data, or aggregate, I guess, in this case. And we're going to go ahead and also await this, Wix data aggregate dot aggregate, again, on our donations table. And in this case, we want to start by grouping. So I'm actually going to pick group here, and we're going to group by the special designation. So this way, it's going to match all of the designations that are the same, and it's going to then we'll go ahead and run a sum on top of that. So we get the amount donated to each of our designation areas. So we'll go ahead and then run a sum on the um, amount for this. Now, since I am awaiting it, I also need the async keyword for this. And then once we are complete, what we're going to do is go ahead and update the rows property of our table. So we want our designation table and we want the rows to be equal to our designation aggregate data dot items. Oh, it would also be helpful if I ran this because we want the result, not the aggregate. Let's go ahead and preview this and we should see our table populate with data. So here we're able to see the special, special designations and the amount that was donated to each of them. 
Something else we might be interested in is what was the max amount donated to each one of these or the average amount donated to one of these. So we can run multiple aggregates even when we're grouping our data. So let me go ahead and put this on a new line so we can see this a little bit better. So another aggregate we might want to run beyond the sum is the max. And this will grab the max value from the special designations group. So we want to go ahead and grab the max amount. So if we go ahead and run this, then we're able to see the max donation value for each one of these groups. So we can see that the general fund is really not getting that big of donations, but scholarships is and education are seeing pretty big donations. So maybe we want to encourage people to give their larger donations to our general fund. Another thing that we can maybe look at is the average amount donated. So instead of max, let's go ahead and look at average. And now one of the things I'm going to have to do here, because as I mentioned, these names are automatically created for us. So maybe we're going to go ahead and call this amount average. I'm going to have to update my table so it knows where to put this data. So in my table, I'm going to go to manage table. I'm going to go to the max donations amount and we're going to edit the field name from amount max to amount average now so that it'll be tied to this field in the items when they're returned. So the table will automatically know how to interpret the aggregate result. We can also go ahead and change the title or the label as well. So that the type or sorry, the label correctly reflects what's being displayed there. Now with this, let's go ahead and look at what the average donation for each special designation is. So we can see again that the general fund is receiving kind of the smallest donations and our scholarship funds and even education here too are receiving our larger donations so people can generally get an idea of what people are donating to, to different areas. This may be more for an admin or someone who is managing your donations as opposed to public information, but sometimes it's helpful because people might not know how much they want to give in a specific area and getting that information about generally what people are giving can be helpful there too. And this is just one application of Wix data aggregates. So as you can see, aggregates are really cool because they can build off each other. You can get really granular in the groupings of the data. You can even group by multiple columns if you have some data that makes sense to have a couple different groups for. And it can be really helpful for getting the, the nitty gritty of the information because sometimes just seeing the rows of data isn't that helpful for us to kind of understand what's going on with our data. So these are really great for those back office, admin, dashboard, analytics, just getting really into what's going on in your databases. If you wanna keep learning more about different functions within the Wix Data API, don't forget to like and subscribe to our videos. And until next time, I'll see you 